Hello, my name is Carmen Aguirre. I'm a third year PhD student at Pars Cancer Institute, Queen Mary University of London. Under supervision of Dr. Gunnar Halden, we are trying to develop a therapy for prostate cancer using oncolytic adenoviruses. That means viruses that kill cancer cells. In this video, I will show you how to culture cancer cells in a TC culture facility and also how to perform a cell viability assay, which are techniques that I normally use in my research. We are now entering the TC culture facility. As we are working with viruses that infect human cells, this is categorized as an SR2 zone. That means that everyone working here has to follow some safety guidelines and use protective equipment. The lab coats that we use are a different color and cannot be taken outside this area. This is to prevent spreading of any contamination. We are now in one of our tissue culture rooms. We use this area to grow cancer cells and to perform different assays on them to test treatments. For example, I commonly perform cell viability assays, which I will demonstrate at the end of this video. In this video, I will show you how to sterilize and set up the tissue culture hood, trypsinize the cells for subculture, seed cells for treatment, passage cells, and finally, perform an MTS cell viability assay. When growing cells in culture, I have to be extremely careful to avoid any kind of bacterial or fungal contamination in my culture cells. To keep everything clean and sterile, we do the work in a piece of equipment called laminar flow hood. When using the hood, a constant air flow prevents any kind of particle to enter from the outside environment, which is not sterile, and at the same time protects the researcher from any dangerous substance they are working with in the inside. In this room, I wear a lab coat and gloves. To avoid any kind of contamination, we clean the hood with a special solution called Bircon and 70% ethanol. Bircon is a disinfectant specially designed for cleaning when working with viruses. We use 70% ethanol to kill cells and bacteria. In addition, all the reagents bottles to be used should be sprayed with ethanol. As everything was clean before introducing it into the hood, everything should be sterile. The hood normally contains pipettes and tips, which are sterile as long as they are kept inside the hood. Now that everything is clean, we are ready to start our tissue culture work. For my research, I use different prostate cancer cell lines. A cancer cell line originates from a patient biopsy and has been isolated and subcultured several times. Every single cell in a cell line is genotypically and phenotypically identical to the others and should behave in the same way while performing any assays. Adherent cell lines can be cultured in different kinds of flasks, like this one. The cells grow attached to the bottom surface of the flask. This pink liquid is the culture medium. It contains all the nutrients that the cell needs to grow. I will now show you two different cell lines. Both are prostate cancer cell lines. However, the one on the left was derived from the original or primary tumor, while the one on the right comes from a bone metastasis and represents a more aggressive form of prostate cancer. As you can see, the morphology is different. They may also show different responses to treatment. Today, I will use medium, PBS, and trypsin EDTA solution to subculture one cell line. There are different types of medium. I will use DMEM medium due to the special requirements of my cell line. It has been supplemented with FBS, fetal bovine serum, and it contains high levels of glucose. The PBS phosphate buffer cell line solution is used to wash the cells. Finally, we use trypsin EDTA to detach the cells from the plastic surface. Trypsin is a protease enzyme that digests proteins after the amino acid lysine or arginine. It breaks adhesions to the plastic surface of the flask. 
the solution also contains EDTA, which chelates calcium. Removing calcium disrupts the interaction between molecules of a protein called cadherin, which holds cells together. Now I would like to show you how to collect cells from the flask. These cells are adherent, that means they grow attached to the surface of the flask and I will have to detach them. The first step is to aspirate the all-use medium. After that, I add PDS buffer to wash the cells, which are attached to the bottom of the flask, and aspirate again. Finally, I add the trypsin and incubate at 37 degrees for 5 to 10 minutes. All the cells should now be detached. I will check using the microscope. Now that the cells are detached and in suspension, I will neutralize the trypsin as it might damage the cells if it remains active. I add media containing 10% of fetal bovine serum, which inhibits the enzyme. And I transfer all the cells into a tube before sealing them. Once we have neutralized the trypsin, the next step is to comb the cells using an automatic cell counter. To do that, we use a special slide that contains two chambers. I add 10 microliters of cell suspension to each chamber. This is an automatic cell counter. I introduce the slide and it will count the cells in both chambers. We can then make the average between the two measurements. The way we see the cells depends on the type of assay we want to perform. This is a six well plate. We use it to grow cells for preparing samples for Western blood, for example. This is a 96 well plate and it is commonly used for cell viability assay. Now I will show you how to seed cells for a cell viability assay. This plate has 96 wells. I will now add a certain number of cells to each well. That is called seeding. I use this plate because it allows me to try many different treatment conditions at once. I will add a different treatment to each well. I normally see 10,000 cells per well. I have diluted the cells to the desired concentration and volume using fresh medium. Now I am going to use a multi-channel pipette to add the same volume of cells to all wells, in this case 100 microliters. First, I have put the diluted cell solution in this sterile tray which makes it easier to pipette. Then, I attach the tips to the pipette and carefully pipette the cells into the plate, row by row. Now I put the plates in the incubator at 37 degrees. The cells will attach overnight and can be treated in my experiment tomorrow. I want to keep my cells growing so I can use them again the following week. I will now prepare a dilution of the cell suspension using fresh culture media and put it in a new flask. This is called passaging cells. I will make a 1 into 5 passage. That means I will take one fifth of the total volume of cells into the flask. I will now put the cells in the incubator at 37 degrees. The cells will attach to the bottom surface of the flask overnight. They will keep growing and dividing until they run out of nutrients or until they cover all the surface of the flask. I passage this cell line every three to four days. So far, I have shown you how to seed cells in wells and how to passage cells. Now, I will show you how to perform an NTS assay, which is used to test cell viability under different conditions. These cells have been treated with different doses of the oncolytic virus I use in my studies. I will now test or assay the amount of cell death resulting from these treatments. Before adding the MTS to the plate, I have to discard the media. I do that by aspiration.
I add the prepared MTS reagent to the cells seeded in 96 well plate by using a multi-channel pipette as before. I will now incubate the cells at 37 degrees for one or two hours, depending on the cell length. Once the MTS is added, live cells can convert it into a color compound produced by a cellular dehydrogenase enzyme. The amount of color is proportional to the amount of live cells and can be measured using a spectrophotometer by reading the absorbance at 490 nanometers. The plate is ready now. As you can see, the color of the media has changed. Some wells are darker than others. That means they have more live cells. I will now use the plate reader to measure the absorbance and quantitate the cell viability following the treatments. This graph shows the results of today's MTS assay. Here I have plotted cell death on the y-axis versus increasing concentrations of virus in the x-axis. The amount of cell death is expressed as a percentage. This number is calculated by comparison with the results for untreated cells, which are used as a control. The dose of the virus is expressed in particles per cell, or PPC. As the dose of virus increases, the cell death also increases. This type of presentation is called a dose-response cure and allows us to calculate the EC50 value, a commonly used measurement which is the dose that kills 50% of the cells. Here is a summary of what we have demonstrated today. Sterilizing and setting up the TC culture hood, trypsinization of cells, seeding cells in a 96 well plate to test treatments, passaging cells for subculture, MTS viability assay. Today, I have demonstrated how to do TC culture and how to perform an MTS assay. I hope you will find it useful for your studies.